Hi everyone, I'm Kevin with Candle Science, and today I'm going to go over some helpful tips to keep in mind when using a large wax melter. This is our large 65 pound stainless steel wax melter. In this model, there are two zone controls. Zone 1 controls the top of the tank, while Zone 2 controls the base. One important thing to remember, you can only use Zone 1 in the top while Zone 2 is also in use. If you're melting a full case of wax, you would likely use both the top and bottom heating elements. However, if you're only melting a small amount of wax, you may only need to use the bottom portion of the melter. There are temperature dials for both the top and bottom zones to help fine tune the temperatures. And the spout gives you quick and easy access when you're ready to pour your wax. Before getting started, make sure that the lever for the spout is in the upright, closed position. We don't want any wax to come out by accident. You should also always have a container under the spout to catch any wax that might drip out. Using the melter is really simple. Add wax to the tank, place the lid on top, and set your temperatures. Make sure to not go above the manufacturer recommended temperatures for the wax that you're using. While melting, you'll want to leave the tank covered to help the wax melt more efficiently. Check on the temperatures periodically and adjust as needed. When the light on the unit turns off, you'll know that the melter has reached the set temperature. When you're ready to pour, place your pitcher under the spout and lower the lever slowly to allow the wax to flow out. The wax will dispense more quickly as you lower the lever, so be careful to avoid splashing. You may also want to reduce the temperature of zone 1 or turn the unit off completely to prevent your wax from scorching. Once the tank is empty and is cooled down, you can use paper towels and rubbing alcohol to remove any debris and keep your melter clean in between uses. Keep in mind, when mixing fragrance oils and wax, it's best to add your fragrances to your pouring pitchers rather than in the melter itself. This gives you some flexibility and allows you to pour multiple fragrances from the same batch. However, if you're doing a full batch of one fragrance, you can add your fragrance to the melter. So what do you do with any leftover wax in your melter? Well, the answer is nothing. It's perfectly fine to leave any remaining wax in the melter for future use. Just make sure that you let the melter cool down before moving it and keep the lid on to prevent any dust or debris from getting into your wax. You may notice the wax start to clump up as it's melting, but this is not an issue. Just use your stirring utensil to break up the wax and allow it to melt more efficiently. Always plug the unit into an outlet that meets the proper voltage requirements. If planning to use a GFCI outlet, the manufacturer recommends running the empty melter prior to first use on a non-GFCI outlet for 24 hours at 250 degrees. This will bake out any moisture from the heating elements and will not harm the melter. This is a powerful melter that pulls 13 amps, so take the proper precautions. It's possible to trip your circuit breaker if there are other appliances on the same circuit. A large wax melter is a simple way to ramp up your candle production. When your business outgrows a double boiler or a small wax melter, the large wax melter is a great option. If you like this video, please give us a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest content. And as always, if you have any questions or need additional support, please feel free to reach out to us.